Today on Fry the Chef, we're going to discuss kitchen knives, how they cut, the difference between Japanese knives and European style knives, how I bought my uh, Forstner 10 inch uh, chef's knife and managed to do that to myself because it was so damn sharp. So we're going to talk about sharpness, cutting, bones, fingers, all kinds of cool things in this episode. Stay tuned. Behold, the lowly, very ripe tomato. You can see a pucker. Show you the difference now between a European knife, a Wusthof Grand Prix, which I've had for 20 years, and then my brand new Kelphalon series uh, VG Japanese steel Damascus blade. So the Wusthof, with sort of a rocking motion, cuts very thin, very beautifully. The difference between that and the Damascus blade is it cuts much thinner because it's razor sharp. So there's your difference between the two chef knives. So to give you some idea of how much these cost, I think I bought this 20 years ago for $127 on sale and you can't go wrong with a Wusthof forged steel classic or Grand Prix. Uh, the katanas I got on sale. I wouldn't buy it in the box, and I'll tell you why in a minute. But the best alternative, according to Cook's Illustrators, is a Victor, Victor Knox by Forstner. And it's a stamp blade, but it's got this non-skid handle. And don't do what I did, which was wash it and rub my hand on the blade, and that's how I got that beauty right there. It is sharp, sharp, sharp. So let's see how it cuts this ripe tomato. Look at that. You know, it's, it's just as sharp as the Katana series blade. So that, this cost me $23 on Amazon. It's a uh, 10 inch. So now, let me show you the real secret here. If you go to my knife blocks, you'll see I have a ton of knives and I've got two more blocks. This is a ceramic knife. It's Kuhn Recon and it cuts just as well as the others. In fact, it cuts super thin, as you can see there. This is a very ripe tomato. This costs all of six bucks. And it's the same steel that you get in the Katana series. So you get this knife with a plastic handle in a ceramic outer for six dollars. Twenty three dollars. This is now probably $200, and this one, I think, is about $100. But the knife to really use out of all these to cut a ripe tomato is this one. My Katana Series 5-inch Nakiri. I have a 7-inch Nakiri, but it doesn't cut as easily on smaller items. And this is the very right part of the tomato. I have to watch my fingers. But this is just as a scalpel. So there you go. You get super thin, super beautiful. And this knife is designed in Japan just to cut vegetables. It's so thin that if you hit rock salt or kosher salt on your cutting board, it's going to chip the blade. And I understand you can't use steels on it. You have to use a ceramic steel, otherwise you'll chip the blade, which you also will get with a shun. So you spend $200 on a shun knife, have kosher salt on the board, and you're going to have a chipped $200 knife you have to send out. So when buying knives, the big question is, what do you buy? Do you buy a block set? I'll show you why not to in a moment. Um, I have individual knives, and that's how all my collections started. So the beauty of a Wusthof Grand Prix or Classic, not the cheaper ones, is that it can go through bones and you can butcher with it and that is great. This is a 12 inch, it may be too big for most people but I've got a big hand. You're supposed to hold them like this. I hold them either way depending on what I'm cooking. Japanese knives. Don't buy a set. They're so expensive. It's ridiculous. In fact, if I had only bought the Nakiri of the Calphalon set and the uh, paring knife, I would be happy. Those two get used more than any others. And I have a whole block over there. 
So be very careful when you buy these and they can go up in price to Pluto. If you don't have a lot of money, the Victor Knox is dynamite. The Victor Knox is non-slip grip. It cuts as sharply as that. It can go through the bone, but not as well because it's not as thick. But let me show you something here. I have a 20 year old Victor Knox bread knife and it still cuts I can sharpen it on my chef's choice that's 20 years old so these two plus a paring knife will keep you in business and if you look at the price this is 32 retail this is about 25 this is six dollars with these three knives you can do anything in the world in the kitchen if you want the best of the best go Japanese but remember you can't cut bone with it you need to have a deba Deba looks like this. It's super thick. It's only um, actually cut on one side, that side. This is perfectly flat. It doesn't have an edge. Um, so it's great for going through fish, that's designed for, or chicken. So you could get by with these three in a Japanese knife set and be very, very happy. Um, or add a gyutu which is a Japanese version of the chef's knife. Not this one. I have a new one on order, a Tujiro, um, which is a very common knife over in Japan. But it's uh, it's got all the advantages of this, but the handle's a lot nicer. So hopefully that gets you started. As I said, I have one, two, three, four, five six seven knife blocks each knife has a special purpose you can get into cheese knives you can get into uh, ceramics um, but what you want to do is find a knife that's excellent on its own that you love and then when you need it you have it this Henkel is a little small but the weight and balance is absolutely dynamite uh, rosewood handle I use it occasionally I mean um, this is my real go-to knife now, the Nakiri, and uh, if I'm doing a lot of chopping, a lot of big stuff, that's the vegetable knife. This is the smaller vegetable knife, and I will either choose my Wustoff or now the Forstner to do uh, the, the big work. So, I'm Conrad. This is Friday Chef. You've seen my arsenal. Happy cooking. <laughs>